Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> I'm I'm very I'm I'm very excited about this cuz uh, Superman and Lois is um is one of the shows that I just it really it really surprised me how good that show is and uh your character in particular is one of the parts of the show that I find really really interesting and I wanted to know what was it like when you were first told that you're going to get to play Superman's son <laughs> Oh it was amazing man I mean yeah I I was doing an off-Broadway play before that, right? Uh, I was still in high school. Uh, so I, you know, it, things kind of were leading in that direction. Uh, but yeah. really, I was found out after the screen test, which was like kind of this five-day intensive thing at Warner Brothers with me and the other kid, who was absolutely lovely, by the way, who's still a really good friend of mine. Um, you know, it, it was an elating moment to find out that I get to be in this. Not only a show not only a superhero show but superman you know it's yeah 90 almost 90 years now worth of comic book history here yeah and did you did you get to like did you read any comic books before taking the role um to be honest no uh no i was not a big comic book fan i was such a big trekkie i think all of my oh. nerdy went to that uh, which was really cool to like meet William Shatner uh, and all those people like backstage at all the Comic Cons and whatnot. Uh, but I certainly understand like the whole little geek culture uh, because I was such a big part of it. I still am. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's such like this new thing in television. It's actually kind of wonderful uh, having these longer form stories. Uh, yeah. instead of these shorter ones, right? And, you know, I think really that's the strength of Superman and Lois. Watch that. Let's see, I'm bringing that around. Yeah, well, uh, well done. But, uh, you know, it has a great way of balancing episodic and serial drama. Uh, you know, yeah. there, there, there is something interesting and there's something that you get out of every episode. There isn't necessarily a villain of the week uh, besides Thaddeus Kilgrave in one, uh, 104. Um, but it is more or less like they have yeah they have these episodic arcs but it's the serial arcs that you're really watching for it's you know it's jordan growing up and jonathan will he stop doing those drugs <laughs> it's uh all that stuff with bizarro it's it's you know what i mean it's just it's all that stuff that goes over the season that's really cool yeah <laughs> yeah i mean like you know that's why i wanted to go into television uh you know, as a kid, you know, you, you watch one of those shows. You know, I, I don't have that many friends my age as a kid. I watched a lot of Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and the, the thing about it is, like, man, uh, you watch a show for eight years. If you're watching that from when you're, like, nine to when you're 17, yeah, and you grow up with these people. Yeah. And, and when it's in that serial way, by the end of it, you're... You know, you feel like you've almost lost all these friends, but it's also like you're so happy for this journey you went on. And that's the magic of serial TV, it, more yeah. so than even episodic. And and I think, hopefully, that's what Superman and Lois will do for people out there. That's a great feeling, man. <laughs> no, I think... <laughs> Peace and long life. Thanks, James. Uh, no, I think James is completely... And you're completely right, that one of the things about this show is, like, people come back for the the overarching stories and also the characters. And I think uh, one of the things about Jordan that is so interesting is he's he, he's struggling with things that I think a lot of people nowadays struggle with, uh, you know, struggling with mental health issues to begin with. And, and um, I think a lot of people can relate to your character. Was that something that you really felt when you were reading the scripts and that you were trying to continue on, like carry on in the future as well? Yeah, I mean... I was always very much an extrovert, uh, right? I mean, it, it, I, I am. I, that, that's who I am. Although I remember when reading the script, I saw so much of, like, 14, 13-year-old me and Jordan. Mm. Um, you know, not even necessarily in the way that he presents himself, just in the person that he is underneath, in the person that I yeah. hope that I was and want to be. Um, you know, the audition sides originally was telling a teacher that they're a dumbass. 
uh, right? It was literally going in and going like, hey, look, the te- uh, I was telling the principal that the teacher was a dumbass. I'm failing this class because the teacher is a dumbass and you're the principal and I don't know why I'm in trouble. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking, I think the reason I ended up getting called back was like, I remember thinking, man, you know, I think I've had that conversation with people. I have had that conversation with principals. And it's never about being angsty. It's never about the anger that you're feeling. I'm sure that is motivating you, but it's more about like, man, this is a teacher and their kids and the kids are going to fail. And, and well, mm. What do you do that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, what, do you, what, you know, what do you do when you waste 30 kids' potential every single day? Uh, that That's the travesty there. And I, I think that's kind of what I brought to the role is that, yeah, he gets mad but he thinks he's right mm. and he wants yeah. to do the right thing more than anything deep down to this core. He wants to do the right thing and he wants to protect those he loves. Yeah. And he just so happens to be Superman's son. <laughs> and he just so happens to have lasers <laughs> shoot out. Of, they call it, what are they called? Yeah. An ocular discharge. I like how at least we're able to make fun of the fact it's called an ocular yeah. discharge. I mean, it really, <laughs> it sounds like a symptom of a disease you really don't want. Yeah. If, if I if I had a, like you know what I mean like you, you, oh there's a new disease it's coming out of like East Africa it, it involves ocular discharge oh my god those poor that people that sounds that sounds terrifying Let's donate some money <laughs> yeah for their ocular <laughs> <laughs> well I mean maybe maybe he might we might get to see him like like be cured of his oculus discharge in season three are you are you filming that right now is that is that we're filming the second to last episode of um season two so we're doing the penultimate season two we call it the abby episode it's a film term abby means the second to last shot yeah so do do you know when you're going to be filming the next season or you have no idea yet uh you know uh i have an idea but ideas are generally not good enough for the public because they're barely good enough for me (laughs) (laughs) that's a that's a good answer i was trying to be really (laughs) sneaky with that question (laughs) (laughs) you know the idea you know um we're for sure having a season three we were renewed yeah we were picked up i just found out that dead boy detectives is picked up uh go check out that my friend from high school isn't it uh david iacono uh, always love to promote his stuff. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, you see, I was actually going to ask that so you've been picked up for season three. Um, is there anything in particular that you're really interested in exploring uh, with Jordan's character in the third season? You know, um, my answer at the end of season one about two was like, I want to see him explore his powers and develop. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that development uh, over the course of from one to two seeming seems to be calming down right especially over like the beginning end of one to two you know and that's part of maturing right you, you stop you, you stop having all these emotions out here and you start feeling emotions in here and uh, now I'm looking forward to him maturing in different ways you know one of the things I've been saying is that like you know, a lot, I, as a kid, you think maturity is getting over things. You think it's, I'm going to be yeah. mature and get over this. But, you know, as an adult, you, you start to find out more and more maturity is knowing that line of what hurts you and what hurts other people. And the great thing about knowing that is knowing when to protect yourself. Hmm. And Jordan, I think, has some to learn there. And I think, he, I think everyone does as you grow up, and we all do, even going into our 80s. But yeah. uh, that, that's going to be interesting to see him figure that aspect out. That would be, that'd be really cool. It's like you've already done – it's interesting about the powers because I was going to ask you about that. You've done a lot of that in Season 2, um, especially with your character. Is there is there going to be even more of that in the third season? Or you, you know, is, are you uh, hoping for me? I, you know, I would love to answer that, but I also, I love my job even more. I uh, know, I know. I don't, I don't want you to, to jeopardize anything. So if you can't no, answer, I, I, say, I know, no, I know. Uh, I, I think it's fair to assume that the powers will, will continue. Uh, awesome. It's fair to assume at the end of every season, there will always be something big happening, right? I mean, that's, that's classic TV. 
yeah. um, whether that big thing is resolution or something new or this or that. So, um, yeah, um, just keep watching. It, it really gets good. But have you had the chance to see any of the big comic book rele movie releases like that came out? So No Way Home, The Batman, those films, Zack Snyder's Justice League. I got to see The Batman uh, or, or squint at it. But I'm, yeah. it's a lighting joke. Uh, but either, you know, it was very, oh my God, what a movie, man. I, I mean, it was just three hour epic. Uh, just, you know, it, it's just such a spectacle to see. You sit there, yeah. you're watching it, and you're just the whole time. <laughs> uh, I didn't get to see Spider-Man. I actually, people are going to kill me for this. I've only seen one of the uh, Marvel movies. Oh, well, I mean, I, I understand. You know, I can understand. You know, the thing is, is like, I, I saw Iron Man, and that was the one I saw. I, you know, a Tyler hasn't seen any versions of Superman, simply because he wants to do his own thing. Yeah, uh, and you can get he really that. doesn't want that in his head. That like, oh, Dean Cain did that. Oh, Henry Cavill did that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. let alone Chris Reeves did that. Yeah, uh, I think for the same in the same token, I don't watch too much superhero stuff because I want to keep this fresh. And yeah. slowly and slowly, I'm getting more and more into it, which is getting harder and harder not to watch it. But at the end, <laughs> I'll do a big binge fest. It'll be fun. Yeah, like the, the, honestly, you can tell that with Tyler's performance as well. It's a very different version of Superman from the versions that we've had before. I think I I think I'm right in thinking that you said that he's your favorite Superman. Is that right? I mean, it's hard not to have him be my favorite. I mean, I get to watch him every day. I get to see yeah. him. Does. Uh, you know, he is certainly my Superman. Uh, Christopher Reeve is, you know, he was incredible. Uh, mm. You know, the same with Henry Cavill. I mean, look at Henry Cavill. Just look, take one look at that man. You go, wow, that is Superman. Yeah, he definitely. Really he, lo he looks the part. Giga Chad. He's the Giga Chad. Although Tyler looks like Giga Chad. Yeah. Oh. That's all right. We got we got you back. Am I there? Okay. <laughs> Tyler looks like Giga Chad. He literally looks. And we we say this all the time. It, you know. <laughs> hey, he's um. He's definitely like he looks great in the suit. And um, one of the things I do love about this show is I'm, I was a massive Smallville fan growing up. And it's like this show to me, Superman and Lois, is like every kind of in a weird way, everything I wanted Small, uh, Smallville to be. And it's, it's like the best, the best looking like comic book um, like TV show I've seen in a long time. Well, like honestly, the, the cinematography on this thing is just insane. It didn't look like it didn't look it looked like nothing I've ever seen before. Was that something that really like when you first saw the show, did you think yeah, I'm in something that's really, really good? You know, uh, th this name, I'm sure, comes up in every interview of everyone who's ever been here. But Lee Tolan Krieger, uh, he yes. was the one who did a lot of the visual stuff uh, of the show. Him and Gavin Struthers, uh, who was our DP, they set that tone. And oh, my God, we all just watched it. Yeah. It was like, what? This is what we've been making? I mean, we didn't even get to see the thing until like four or five months into shooting. We've been in COVID. Mm. We were isolated up here. We were all generally a little bit wary um, of the whole experience. And then we started to see it around February, uh, having come there that September before. And we all realized how much this was all worth it. Like, yeah. it, it just, oh my God. And our DPs at the moment, are Gord Brahul and Stephen Mayer. Both are just incredible. Um, they all have they have their different styles of doing things, but looks like <laughs> candy every time. It really does. Like the show, the show. Like I've, I'm, I'm. All, well, we're into season two at the moment. I think I'm being in France. I think I'm a couple of episodes behind uh, because they they release them a bit later over here. But uh, yeah. I really cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what happens next. But also, before you go, because uh, I know you've got another interview after this, Peanuts. What is it? What is it? Like, literally, I'm talking to the voice of Linus. So it's like, I'm a big Peanuts fan. And um, I wanted to know how that went. And what, what's it like being in that, in that movie? Man, that was a lot of fun. I was just a kid. 
Um, yeah. You know, uh, it, when you're a kid and you're doing that stuff, you don't even know how important it is. You don't know how important things are to people. It is a kid. Uh, it was so much fun. I went to the room. We had a great director, Steve Martino. Uh, yeah. it, you know, it was a great cast of kids. Uh, Noah Schnapp turned out to end up having <laughs> yeah. quite the career for himself, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I, he did. I, I pictures <laughs> from my 13th birthday. He and I spent that together way back when. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he turned out to do quite well for himself over in Stranger. I remember him talking about Stranger Things, actually. It was like, yeah. yeah the show in Atlanta, it's kind of weird. Like, there's all sorts of stuff going on. I go missing. I'm like, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, his, his career's uh, kind of blown up thanks to that, hasn't it? I, I, like, think, uh, I think he did quite well for himself. Uh, yeah. you know, we had a lot of great kids come out of that. I mean, Hadley, Belle Miller, she was Lucy. She, uh, I think, is doing a lot of singing stuff now. She's always yeah. singing the national anthem somewhere. Uh... <laughs> You know, it, it was it was a great group of kids. Uh, we never got to spend much time together in the room. We were all just doing our lines by ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we'd just do ABCs. But then, you know, at the events, you know. Uh, yeah. Too much hassle. Yo, it was great talking to you guys. No, thank, thank you, you for talking to us. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. See you guys.